Hello and welcome. Good evening. It's been a whole month since the last live. I'll just say a quick good evening to the guys and gals that are in. Good evening, Wayne. Welcome. And Joseph, my friend Joseph King. Um, Mark Pritchard. Good evening, Mark. Good evening, Tracy. Tracy Keaton, Mama Bear's She Shed. Good evening to you. And uh, da, 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 that's about it for now. Oh, no. Lawrence Bagasia. Good evening to you, Lawrence. How are you? Welcome. <coughs> Terry Bartlett, good evening to you. Good evening, Adam, A-D-A-G. Anna Philaxis, good evening to you. And Rob, Mr. Rob Bennett. So a little cameo for you later on, Rob, my mate. Oh, Rob C.P., James Crawford, good evening. Mike Yu from Ilminster. Il Ilminster, good evening to you, Mike. And TJ, good evening, Terry, how are you? TJ Turning, just a basic, good evening to you. And Neil M., good evening, Dai Prout, good evening, Dai, Shamoy, my friend. Kaylee DeBoer, good evening to you, Kaylee. And also Craig B, good evening to you. Peter Brady, good evening. Dai C, good evening to you, Dai. And Jean, Jean, is it Jean or Jean? Oh, Jean. Jean Charles Brickman, good evening to you. And welcome, of course. And Mr. Martel, good evening to you. William Kenny, hi, good evening. And Ronnie, Joe. I always get this wrong, Ronnie. Um, <laughs> good evening to Ronnie. Good evening and welcome. And Don McKee, good evening. How are you? And welcome. Nice to see you all on this. Uh, it's a bit smoky in here, actually, because I've got an uh, incinerator going outside and I got the doors down, but it's got to the smoky stage now where things are just smoking away. Norm Ackers, good evening to you, Norm, and welcome. David Clark, good evening. And Norm, oh, I said good evening to you, Norm. You're one of the ones, the very fortunate, that have had two good evenings this evening. Dewey Shed, good evening, Dewey. How are you? Stuck outside the hospital or something good to watch now. Hope nothing too bad, mate. David Clark, good evening to you. I think you might have had two good evenings as well. So if I forget you, if you should darken the doorstep another time i shan't say good evening to you kevin c ryan good evening how are you from tipperary neil m i've said hello to i don't know why i sort of keep account of how many hellos i say that's funny <laughs> somebody's obviously popped in taking a look at me and thought i don't like him because there were 50 people in at one stage and now there's only 48. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be a first we haven't actually started and people are going already it's amazing <clears throat> yep um i have not actually mentioned anything at the moment as i will say in the uh the main start at 7 30 i'm joined tonight by none other than pete ravenscroft aka pete twisted trees and he's flying Good evening, he says, and I'll shut up for him to say good evening again. <laughs> good evening, all. Just confirm that you're getting my voice with no echo. Um, if you could do that, please, somebody, just say yes or no, there's no echo. Um, Mark, unfortunately, can't make it. Uh, Mark, the gentleman, Turner, he's filling his belly with barbecue food somewhere with his good lady, Kim. So... Um, Mark sends his apologies. I'm sure he'll have a better time than being stuck in my ear for the evening. Of that, there is no doubt. Dave Oti, good evening, Dave. I don't think I said hello to you. There's no echo. That's great. Thanks, Craig. That's echo. wonderful. There's a question um, there from Julie shared about uh, what do you think of the Record Power Herald? Um, I can't comment on it, Dewey, because I've never used one. Um, I'm sure there might be somebody here that uses Record Power. Malcolm Douglas, good evening to you. John Maguire, I have said hello, but I'll say hello again. I'm doing this a lot now. Um, it's your well, age. It is my age. I think it's other things as well. Um, well it started for me to go on, I'll open a beer. Yeah. Andy Pummel, good evening. How are you? From Auckland. How are you? I don't hold any grudge against the All Blacks for always beating Wales at the rugby. I really don't. Um, 
and I shan't mention the rugby at all. Um, I would like to say this is, I will obviously say this again at 7.30 when I go live proper. Um, this will be the first time I've actually turned a bowl or attempted to turn a bowl on a live um, <clears throat> because I don't consider myself a bowl turner. Um, I'm certainly not quick. Um, and I will say this again, again at 7.30, is that what I intend to do now in the future is to do a project each time I do a live. Um, if I don't finish it on that live, I'll finish it on the next live and then start another project. And then if, um, <coughs> if there is a need, in my view, and my pit crew's view, to do another sort of Q&A demoing type thing that obviously will slot one in as well. Brian at Hartwood year. turning. Good evening, Brian. Sorry, Pete, I missed that, mate. So probably next year, new crop of beginners in. Yes, yeah, indeed. How are you, Brian? Pleased to see you. Andrea Snell, good evening to you. Just going back through the... No, I think I've seen everybody there. That's okay. Yeah, we're okay. It could be a nice little intimate band this evening. Possibly. It is bank holiday, don't forget. A lot of people are on holiday and they've got far better things to do than sit and watch me. Oh, one little thing, a little shout out, if you like. Um, Steve Kerville. I was very honoured to be asked by Steve to be a guest earworm. Um, <clears throat> and because I, I'm away for a couple of weeks... Um, I've had the okay from my good lady wife that I shall be doing it. Um, I forget which Saturday it is now. Not next Saturday. It's a week Saturday. It'll be 11th, I think. Friday. Oh, the Friday, the 10th then. Is it the 10th? Friday the 10th? Anyway, it'll be the, it'll be the Friday the 10th, if it's the 10th. Um, I'll be messing your screens up again. I'm just look, looking forward to that, and I'll be doing that from, uh, from North Yorkshire. <laughs> um... Okay. Ah, Woodworm Paul, good evening to you and welcome, sir. Make sure I haven't forgotten anybody. Yes, I have. Paul Hoyton, good evening to you. Sorry, I missed you, my friend. Norman Greenwell, I missed you as well. Good evening. I'm just going back over the chat. You see that... Andrea, Andrea Snell, good evening to you. I'm sorry I missed you. I am relying heavily oh richard old good evening to you as well i'm relying heavily on a single pit crew and um they don't get involved a new viewer from wales a new viewer from wales who's that yeah uh myk mick is it oh, where'd i miss that then how far back is that Ooh. it's on my screen still about a uh, third of the way down oh Oh, Mick, well... You hear a bit more Welsh support for you. Yeah, good evening, Mick, and welcome to you. There's two or three of you in now, which is good. Alex of Wild and Things, good evening to you. Colin Ball, good evening and welcome to you too. Peter Brady, good evening. It's the 10th of Friday, as it is my birthday on the Saturday. Thanks, Peter. Good evening and welcome. And I will be guest earworming for Steve Kerwell, uh, Kerville next friday or a week friday i should say on the 10th clint of wood dancers good evening obviously mick is known that's good okay it's nearly 7 30 almost 7 30 and uh i shall make a start and as i say what i intend to do is approximately and you know me approximately an hour and a half ish including the you know the chat afterwards and if you don't get it done by then which i doubt i will then i'll finish it off in the next life and it will start out of the project and that's how it's going to go because i'm no way i'm no way in the wood turner i'm certainly not a quick turner um in fact i've forgotten something you must I, i'll leave you with uh pete for a minute because i've got to go and get something you are. You've got a full screen there, Pete. How's that, mate? That's pretty good, actually. And I'll put you in the middle. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in charge for a change. Okay, I shall be back in a minute. Sorry about that. All right. As we go through tonight, if you've got any questions, um, I'll answer some of them, but uh, others I'll read out for 
Mike. Uh, just depends on the question. And the question I see there is what happened to Mark this evening? Uh, Kim happened. She said, Mark, you're coming to a barbecue with me. So that's that. And as we go through this evening, if you uh, like what Mike's doing and you want to buy him a coffee, if you look at the top of the chat, there's a link there to do just that. It is appreciated and it all goes on cameras and bits and pieces. Yeah, I could turn something, Terry, but um, I've opened a beer now, so the lady's got to stay off. It's actually the first time I've stood in this workshop for over a week now. I've been in and out getting tools, but I haven't been in the workshop to turn anything. I wonder if my cameras still work. Oh, yeah, they do. Uh, messy workshop. And there's an extra beer tonight because I've got a cover from Mark as well, so I've got to drink his beer. Uh, the Armageddon Bowl, um, it died a uh, nasty death. I tried to uh, turn it thinner and no, it didn't work. I mean, my, my lady is very capable. It's the Axminster um, 1628 or whatever it is, um, 406 now. And it handled it, but I could only get 100, 150 RPM out of it before we started moving the laser around. I'm back. It wasn't enough for <laughs> good turning. Oh, I'm getting quite dizzy there, Mike. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? Right, that's it. I think. Joseph wants to know how many captive rings you're going to put on the bowl tonight. <laughs> yeah, I, I sent uh, jo Joseph and I were messaging each other, messaging each other earlier on, and he's always on about me doing captive rings. So uh, I said I'm going to do a captive ring on a bowl. Well, not really. Okay, it's just gone 7:30, so we'll do the uh, official good evening and welcome. Um, it's been three, it's been four weeks since I've done a live, unfortunately, due to work and other commitments. Um, really pleased to be here and very pleased to see you all. If I've forgotten to say hello to you, then please accept my apologies. Um, I'm sure Pete caught up while I wasn't here. I'm out of breath now because I run down the garden into the house and back again. Okay. Um, there's going to be a, uh, joining us tonight, as most of you here already know, is Pete uh, Ravenscott. Ravenscroft, aka Pete Twisted Trees. Unfortunately, Mark, Hi another regular member of my pit crew, unfortunately can't make it tonight because he's off with his young lady uh, stuffing his face at a barbecue, and I can't blame him for doing that. Um, Mark, you've committed a cardinal sin. What's that? You didn't say hi to Jennifer. Oh, I didn't see Jennifer there. Uh, good evening, Jennifer. My humble apologies. Please forgive me. I am gutted. Welcome. <laughs> Lovely to see you. The um, the format's got to change a bit. I've got to start doing projects now. Um, if I don't finish them, as I've explained to the majority of you that we were here before I went 7.30, um, I will finish them on the next live. Good evening, Martin. Gentle turn. How are you? Oh dear, I'm. You're down through me. I hope everything goes well for you, Martin. And Jerry Dempsey, good evening to you. How are you? And welcome. Um, yeah, so we'd be doing a project. Before I go into that, <coughs> I have a, a mention. Our very own Rob Bennett, uh, Rob C P, very kindly uh, sent me this portrait of myself. Uh, a very talented man. Whoops, there we go. Look at that. I mean, that is stunning. I have one major complaint, though, Rob. It looks too much like me, old and wizened. But you've caught my character perfectly, unfortunately. <laughs> I am waiting on some perspex. I'm going to make a nice frame out of hardwood for it. 
and it'll be going up at the back somewhere. But thanks, Rob. The only thing I will say, Rob, you could have signed it because you should have done. But uh, I would be absolutely over the moon if I could do anything similar to that, and I certainly couldn't. And I've got to put it back into its envelope. Um, and once again, Rob, honestly, I am over the moon with it. Thank you very much indeed. I really appreciate it. So that's Mr. Rob CP, Rob Bennett. Um, okay, so tonight's star prize. What we're going to be doing tonight is turning this ash uh, bowl. I started, I was not started turning it, but I did a few cuts on it at the last live showing some uh, bowl, bowl gouge cuts. And I thought it's a nice piece of ash. There doesn't seem to be any cracking in it. I've had it about six, seven years, I should think. Um, it's pretty dry. It's around 7%. It's around nine inches in diameter at the moment and about five inches at the moment in depth. So um, I thought that'll be a good first project. So safety specs on. I would normally wear a respirator, as I'm sure you're all aware. I always wear a respirator when I turn, but I can't do that, obviously, when you're demoing. So, <clears throat> we'll start off with, I think we might try that. A bit of a picture-in-picture picture to start with. If you want me to change it, Pete, let me know. I got to start, I would normally use a half-inch bowl gouge, but I'm going to be using a 3 8 because a lot of people don't have half-inch bowl gouges. Um, 3 8 is more than capable of doing 99.9% .9 of your work. So, the first order of the day is to square this off here and to establish some solid wood um, to put on a tenon. Reason for a tenon, it's quite a deep bowl. I prefer tenons on the whole. The only time that I will use a mortise is normally on a shallower platter type uh, piece, but this is a tenon. But the first thing we have to do is to get this, get a plane flat enough to be able to form that tenon. So if you can spin them up, yes, I've cheated a bit. I can get up to about 900 RPM on this one. But uh, Brian Watkins. Evening, Brian. James Wood revived. And Good evening. Harry Dempsey have all just come in. Good evening to you all and welcome. Nice to see you. Thank you for coming. So I'm going to be using, as I say, the 3 8 uh, bowl gouge, the Simon Hook 3 8 bowl gouge. And my, I've got the tailstock up for support. It's on a worm screw, which is uh, a worm screw faceplate, if you like, which goes into the C jaws, the axis of C jaws. I quite like that. So all I'm going to do now is nibble away because there's quite a bit of air here and just get rid of as much as I can to be able to establish my tenon. And when I get to the end, get to the middle, then I shall just remove the tailstock to form. As you can see, there's quite a bit of judging. I'm not putting any, any force into this. Just letting the wood come down onto the edge and just advancing forward. Nice and slowly. There's something on that picture, Mike. There's a ghost image over it. I'm sorry? There's a ghost image over that picture. A ghost image over the picture? Yep. Of what? <laughs> Trickering on and off, um, just a rectangle in the right-hand side. Oh, right, okay. Um, bear with me. Technical problem. Don't see where that's coming from. How's that? Is that okay now? An empty frame in OBS that needs to be turned off. Sorry? Have you got an empty frame in OBS that needs to be turned off? No, not on that one. I haven't. Okay, let's go to... How's that? Is that all right? Same problem. Pardon? Same problem? Yeah. Right, we have a technical issue, ladies and gentlemen. Just bear with me a second. Um, let's go through all the... On the face, I've only got one. That's okay, I presume. Yeah, that's good. Overhead. Is that okay? 
That's good. Yep. All right. Head stock. That's where your issue is. I don't know if you oh. can see it as well, but it's coming no, down I can't. about halfway across. Oh. Down to the spindle height and going out to the right. That one? Got it on that one as well. Oh, my goodness. Ah, I wonder. I wonder. Ah, I wonder. Hang on a minute. If I get rid of that. Sorry about this, ladies and gentlemen. I've got to get rid of you on there, Pete. Okay, it appears to be good on YouTube, so it's only on the Skype that we've got a problem, so that's okay. Ah, oh, well, I got rid of you now. It's too late. That's all right. <laughs> Is it? Um, Dewey said, says, what's so great about accidents with chucks? Everybody seems to be using them. Um, well, I use them as well. My reason is I like the jewels. Yeah, I mean, I, I, the reason I use Axminster is that, let's just turn the lake off here. Um, the reason I use Axminster, Dewey, is that the first truck I bought was a uh, um, Clubman 100 with my first lathe. And obviously bought a few jewels with that. But I built my jaw collection up over the years. I like the Axminster chucks. When the Evo Evolution uh, SK114 came out, I got one of those. And... Um, that's what I have now, and the the main reason is all the jewels are interchangeable. And I think if you start with a a, a manufacturer's chuck, you if it's okay, you tend to keep with it because if you extend the number of trucks you've got, all the jewels will fit those trucks. That's my reasoning behind it. Not saying the other, I mean there are other trucks out there which are good and possibly some better, but I've had no issue at all. They're solid, well-made, and uh, extremely good chucks. Okay. Um, has that problem gone, though, Pete? Apparently, it's only on Skype. It doesn't appear to be on YouTube, so that's good. Oh, that's okay. All right, then. Okay, so we'll go back to... Um... You were threatening the bottom and turning it around. Yeah, we'll go that one. That's okay. One. So, what I'm, what I'm trying to do, as I say, is to get some solid meat, uh, solid wood here to form my tenon. I can bring the tool rest in. And Mr. Oliver has joined us. Good evening, Mr. Oliver. How are you? Very, very honoured to have you here tonight. He paid me to say that, by the way. Okay, so um, just going towards nice, easy cuts. Just to try and establish Maybe one more, and we might have some solid wood to do the tenon on. And don't worry about the centre, because that will be taken down. Now, I'm almost there. I don't mind the cambium layer, but I'll take one more pass, and then I should be able to get my tenon... Uh, Sorry, Pete. Nick Castle has joined us. Good evening, and how are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. One more. And... Yep, that's going to be fine. So, what I'll do now is to remove the tailstock. Get rid of the elbow stabber, as we all call it. Especially Mr. Oliver calls it the elbow stabber. Because he's a bit of a cockney, you know. You might not have realised that, but I assure you, he is. Okay, now, because I like to have the tailstock up as long as possible, um, when we're taking this off, rather than doing a cut this way i will take it off towards the headstock just to give me uh, my pressure if you like is going towards the headstock so i'm less likely to cause problems especially if i get a catch which could happen perish the thought okay and then just square that off Mm. 
nice nice cuts actually we put the tailstock down a bit and a bit nearer there we go and i keep saying this especially for the newer turner is if you're not happy stop the lathe regroup and always light cuts towards the middle because the wood is going very slowly and when you get to the middle it's hardly turning at all okay so what I like to do again not everybody does this but I like to do it once I've got my uh, sizing there's various ways of doing it I know that it's 50 56 mil is the optimum and I go for about 58 normally 58 mil which is 29 from the middle so we do that approximately Andy Pommel said, uh, hi Mike what what make are your tool handles please there's Simon Hope Simon uh, th this one here whoops this one here is the quick whoops here we go is the quick release handles um which are ideal because simon's uh the hook cryo tools are crown and they're double-ended so you've got like this one obviously you've got uh two ends to it so the quick release are handy he also does a grub screw handle um like so and the spindle roughing goes in there because it's obviously not double double ended so there's no need to keep changing it so um those are the handles that i use for the majority of my tools okay so what i do now is just me is just get a a parting and go in with a parting tool change camera mike oh yeah change camera now what I've done is the schoolboy error. I'll change camera. Schoolboy error. I have actually gone inside the line, so I shall go outside the line for my tenant. So it's going to have to be a little bit shallower. The bull, that is. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, we'll get rid of this bit. Told you it's the first bowl I've done on. Uh... Let's get rid of this little uh, piece of excess here. Okay. There we go. So we're now looking at that as my tenon. So I can. Don't have to go with the complete depth. But that'll be approximately the depth of the tenon and now that gives me an area to work from to do the shaping now there are pull cuts and push cuts you start with a pull cut you can if you wish just turn around here a little bit take the corners off and start doing your shape it's got to be a basic shape bowl nothing fancy but handle down fairly low using just to the left uh, of the nose on the left hand wing nice light cuts and start to get that shape youtube appears to be buffering sorry youtube appears to be buffering there's a few in the chat saying it this is not going well is it um i don't know what to do about that to be honest with you um when you say you can no when you say it's buffering what does that actually what happens it there could be that your signal is uh, weak going up to the internet or it could just be a youtube problem it's difficult to say hang on it says open widget i had this last time hang on just bear with me again people i've opened a widget but i don't know what it's done hasn't done anything Right, um, I don't, I'll have to leave it like that for a minute and see what happens, yeah? Yeah. And if people can possibly let us know. 
Edge is asking, will Mike go through the bottom tonight? Um, if I don't go through it tonight, Ed, I'm sure I'll go through it on the next live when I finish it off. <laughs> Thanks for your confidence, mate. I really appreciate it. It's really, really encouraging. Okay. Now, what I like to do, I'm just hogging wood away, and i tell you what I'm going to do, which is something I always do, but I didn't do on this occasion, and I'm not going to run through it, or go without. When you're doing this sort of hogging, especially on a worm screw, you want to bring your tailstock up for extra support, and the reason I know that, and for those of you that say I put my quill out too far, I've never had a problem doing so. So... That gives me the support I want, and I won't get that juddering now because I've got extra support. Just turn it down ever so slightly. Much better. Andrew Goldston is uh, saying, hello everyone, got my first raise last week and want to turn bowls. I was wondering if I had to use a bowl gouge or could I use another type of gouge? Uh, you do need a bowl gouge to do it properly. You can use carbide. Um, I can't speak to carbide. I don't use them. Uh, can use them. But um, if you're using traditional tools, you need a bulge out. Now what I'm doing here is taking quite a bit of wood away. And I am using a 3 8 which is more than capable. I do use the half inch a lot. But I thought I'd use solely the 3 8 bowl gouge on this one. All I'm doing here is removing excess wood. No idea what shape I'm going for at the moment. I just want to. I just want to uh, reveal, for want of a better word, the tenon. gives us some idea, excuse me, of what we're working at. Okay, I want to go a little bit deeper with the tenon. Let's just double check that the... When you drop your calipers on the floor... Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, pushing the boundaries there. I'll tell you what I'm going to have to do, and again, I'll apologise for this. Why should I apologise? It's funny, actually, because when you're doing something on your own in the workshop, you know, you, you sort of do something you're not happy with. It doesn't matter, does it? It's not a problem. I just want to make sure that the, uh, the tenon, yeah. Hey, Jamin, so it seems it was buffering because it was trying to decide for your accent. <laughs> Thank you. That is. So that's all settled down now, so that's good. That's good. Well, it, it said for those of you that do lives and that happens, it does say. I mean, I've, I've got forty-eight. Always check the speed. Forty-eight meg outside here in the in the garage workshop. Um, it it has said for the last few weeks for some reason open widget, and I've always been a little bit sceptical of that. But obviously, whatever widget it is, it's doing the job. So, thank you, Mr. Widget, is all I can say. Okay, so that tenon is a good size. So, I'm hoping we can keep some of this cambium on the outside, but it doesn't look as if I'm going to be able to. Let's just carry on and uh, lower the tool rest ever so slightly and just do a bit of... Um, basic shaping now the thing is that i like a push cut preferred for finish etc so again i'm now at a point although the tail stocks up from about here i can use a push cut 
so again just light cuts and your left hand I'm going to be a note to the more experienced turners I'm merely stating what they already know what you need to do is to let the wood come down onto your edge Don't try and force it. Don't hang on to your bolt gouge for grim death. Peter Craig, he said, I always seem to be sharpening chisels. What is the best angle when sharpening, please? For Just depend on which chisel you're sharpening. Yeah, for a bolt gouge, it can vary. It, it is a very personal thing. This is uh, approximately 55 degrees. Uh, that's what I happen to like. It's not um, an exact science. It's not exactly 55 degrees, but 55 is what I like. Um, and then I have a 60, it's about 62 degrees actually, what I call a bottom feeder, or what is called a bottom feeder, for deep bowls if I can't maintain the bevel um, when I get down to the middle for the center so but there are people that use 45 degrees um, uh, not Jimmy Clue Stuart Batty he uses 40 the 40 40 grind um, and he's a far better ball turn than I'll ever be but you know it's personal this works for me um, And Can we go over here? We're missing most of the action on that one. Yeah, sure, of course we can. Do, do, do. There we are. Go on there, shall we? There we are. See, that's what, the pit, that's what I pay this terrific salary to the pit crew to keep me informed. But do they keep me informed? I'd, I'd be glad when Mark comes back. No, to no, no. <laughs> Only when it amuses us. <laughs> Just light cuts now. I've got a bit of knock in there. Is that still what's that? Ah, oh, we've still got a bit of still got a bit there, so let's go back to here. It's showing off. He says he's got 100 megabyte up and down. He's what? Sorry. He's got 100 megabyte up and down. Yeah, I know, but it took you about three years to get it, and all the all the trouble. Yeah, I know. You you know you live in. You see, when you live in a city, Ed, like you do, <laughs> you have all these things at your availability. Poor little country folk like me. Actually, Ed does live in the country, but. Uh, Now this isn't the final shape, but it gives me an idea of. Joseph is claiming a hundred, uh, one thousand one hundred and forty-five megabyte download. Yeah, well, Joseph always was a big head. <laughs> yeah, you don't need it, do you, Pete? It's not necessary. Nah, not that much. It's just bragging rights. Sorry. <laughs> Benjamin suggesting that the earworms deserve a Christmas bonus. They do. Not quite what said, but Benjamin. They do. Okay, what I'm trying to do now is uh, just refine the shape and take that flat spot out to the front. It's coming round, and when I get to a certain point, I'm bending my left leg, straightening my right leg, keeping my balance. And this is one reason why I always like to wear a full face shield because I've got a mouthful of shavings and this is dry ash um, <coughs> it's not a, a, I've swallowed some as well very nice too um, I really don't like turning especially bowls and that without uh, a full face shield on not so much for the thing coming off but to reduce the amount of dust that I eat <coughs> Excuse me. 
the things we do. Well, I think you get to the bottom of a cup of coffee and find half inch of sawdust in there. Yeah. Okay. How does that look? Starting to look okay. Still got that. No, we're okay there. And you mustn't forget that, of course, the uh, what will be the front is not uh, uh, true. So there's going to be it's going to come down to about here anyway. I should think by the time it's uh, straightened up. But all in all, I'm quite happy with how that looks. A bit of refining to be done. Um, I'm going to make that tenon a little bit deeper. And oh. Ed said, if I'm very lucky, might, yeah. go, might give you a bowl. Yeah, but I want a Christmas bonus this year, not next year. <coughs> yeah, but he's, he's, he's got this year's from Wayne. <laughs> okay. I'm just making it a little bit. Now that's weird. Everything is nice and square here, and yet the tenon, which I did. What's happened there? The tenon that I did. No, nothing's gone. You did take it off. That's it. Pardon? I did. Yeah, but it's. Uh, you did take it off. Okay. It's 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 metal to metal. Yeah. Oh well. You live and learn. I, I always. Well, of course, I, I never take a bowl off halfway through. But no, if I, I ever did, I would always re retrew up my uh, tenon yeah, afterwards. Yeah, I would, but uh, I haven't got a lot to play with. Never mind. We'll uh, soldier on. We'll soldier on. Jerry Dempsey said, Mike, who do you consider the best wood turner on YouTube? Present company accepted. I think uh, that question shouldn't be answered, really. I'm not going to. There's a lot of good ones out there. <laughs> there are some amazing turners out there. Um, far better demonstrators. And to be honest, you've got to watch several shows from each one because some projects go well, some projects don't. Same as in exactly. your workshop. Yeah. It is, it's, how can I put it, and no offence, Jerry, no offence meant, um, it's not the sort of question that I would ever answer in public, because everybody, and this is an old chestnut, everybody has their own favourite, I'm just taking the elbow stabber out, um, everybody has their own favourite, and everybody uh, has a preferred style, if you like, of turning and of presentation, um, unfortunately, I am as I am. Um, I don't put on any airs and graces. It, it's I try and be as true as I can be to as I am in the workshop when there's nobody watching. It is difficult because obviously you know there are people watching and you don't want to make a mistake. Obviously we all make mistakes, but we don't want to make one. Not It doesn't bother me about making a fool of yourself because I've done that so many times. It's It's the fact that you want to try and show people how to do it and if you make a mistake how you overcome that mistake now as i say um as you can most probably tell i am not a bowl turner i love turning bowls but i don't spend enough time at it that's the problem so it's the same as anything else muscle memory so i'm gonna just finish off this bit here Doug Miller has joined us. Hello, Doug. And it is for me, anyway. I'm going to go in slightly, very slightly, which it's doing. And that's all pretty good. I got a catch there. I don't know if anybody noticed that. Because I was talking, I uh, actually got a catch. So... I'm not sure that's going to actually... Apparently it's still buffering and there's no sound. Oh, Christ. <sighs> I'm going to give... Tools on the floor. You're fine. I'm going to give up, I think. 
I really don't know what to do. Um, Are you going out of the Yeah, I can't hear you probably now either, Pete. You could try dropping 70. Sorry? I'll try refresh. Um, right, what I'm going to do is come back to the face. Oh, what's happened? It's cut out completely. No, it doesn't. Still got you on Skype. Yeah. Don't know what's going on here. I'm just going to do a quick uh, <coughs> speed test. 